I'm going to take you through a journey of a patient who recently had an upper eyelid blepharoplasty or cosmetic eyelid surgery. She is a typical 30 plus year old woman who only wants an enhancement of her upper eyelids. Uh, she's happy with her lower eyelid contours, but she wants to have a little more space to apply makeup on the upper eyelid and she feels it's going to make her eyelids look a little brighter. I'm going to go through the uh, analysis, the techniques, and the uh, recovery that someone should anticipate when considering this procedure. For those who are new to my channel, I'm Dr. Joel Kopelman. I'm a facial plastic surgeon with an expertise in eyelid surgery. So let's dive into the analysis of this uh, lady's issues here. First of all, the first thing I look at is what is her brow position in relation to her upper eyelid because her brow can have a direct impact on the redundancy of the skin on the upper eyelid. This is a common event that occurs in your 30s as the eyelid laxity occurs and starts to create a downward shift of the soft tissue. In her case, she doesn't have any lateral uh, shift of the brow which would cause lateral hooding. So her problem really is confined to the upper eyelid itself. It's not a brow issue, okay? Which is really good because we don't have to do any brow uh, repositioning to get an excellent cosmetic result on the upper lid. So if you're thinking of having this procedure done on your upper eyelids, your two options from an anesthetic point of view are you can have it local anesthesia, which means you get a sedative plus Tylenol prior to the procedure, or you can go to a surgery center and have IV sedation. That's really up to you and whether you can uh, feel that you can comfortably have the procedure under local anesthesia. Most of my patients do opt to have just local anesthesia. It's less expensive. There's no recovery time of following the procedure, really. They're usually very comfortable and they go home uh, within a few minutes after the procedure. So on the day of the procedure, the patient comes in, they're uh, put in a sterile gown with a cap on so their hair doesn't get in the way. I measure out specifically the amount of skin to remove on each side so that they can comfortably close their eyelid and at the same time take out the exact amount of skin on each side to obtain a symmetric final result. And that's done with what's called a caliper, which is a measuring device that measures out the amount of skin to remove. So after I make some of my markings, I, as you can see, I make a, a elliptical uh, markings with my uh, marking pen. I have the patient lying down, then I sit them up as well to make sure that in, even in a sitting position, I get symmetric uh, markings. Sometimes the impact of gravity can change some of them of my uh, assessments in terms of, of how much skin to remove. In this particular patient, she had primarily a skin uh, laxity of the upper lid, or excess, if you will. She didn't really have a lot of bulging fat, and many patients do have uh, inner corner bulging fat. Sometimes the muscle itself is very thick. A strip of that muscle underneath the skin has to be removed also to contour the eyelid. But in her case, this was primarily uh, a procedure that was going to remove just the skin alone on the upper eyelid. Let me walk you through exactly why the markings are so critical in terms of the ultimate result. These marks are the guide for how much skin to remove during the procedure. There's an art to it. There's a accuracy to it. There is you have to be very precise because otherwise there'll be asymmetries between right and left upper lids. So we have to be patient in terms of marking out these lines and there's some art to it, okay? Uh, even though uh, I don't like to call every plastic surgeon an artist, I wanna say that in my case, I'm extremely careful about my markings so that I get as close to the symmetry on both upper lids as possible. Now, not everybody's face is totally symmetric, but we try to obtain as much symmetry as possible by being very careful about the preoperative markings. That means before we operate and before we make an incision. Whether you have this procedure done under 
IV sedation, which is twilight sleep, or under local anesthesia, the next step is to locally inject something called lidocaine with epinephrine, which has a it constricts the blood vessels uh, and prevents bruising and, and bleeding to occur during the procedure. It doesn't matter whether you have IV sedation or if it's local, you still have to have that kind of injection done. And that is performed just prior to the incision itself. So I inject, I wait about 10 to 15 minutes after I inject, and then I come back and I make an incision with a very fine, uh, surgical blade and following the lines uh, that I've pre previously made. And after that, the skin is, is removed, okay? Just the skin itself is taken off in layers. And then if there's any additional tissue that needs to be removed, whether it's protruding fat or, or protruding muscle, I'll then trim the muscle accordingly. Ultimately, what I want to achieve is a symmetric upper eyelid uh, result and 99% of the time we get good symmetry. After removing that strip of skin or, or and or muscle or fat, I then close the wound with what's called permanent sutures. Now they're not permanent, they're removed after five to seven days following surgery, but I choose to, to use those uh, materials because I feel they cause less reaction on the skin and less scarring ultimately for the patient. So the line becomes much more, less noticeable, the incision line uh, after using permanent sutures rather than absorbable sutures. She has some swelling, some modest bruising. This is what you have to anticipate from a procedure. You're not having a procedure without having some consequence of having this procedure done. So I want everybody to be comfortable with the idea that you're going to be swollen and have a little bruising, and that is going to progressively improve over several days. To mitigate this swelling and bruising, immediately following the procedure, we put uh, ice packs on the eyelids and intermittent ice packs we recommend for the first two days following surgery. Uh, here uh, we can see a, a patient about three or four days out and you can see some bruising and some of the bruising will by gravity uh, uh, descend down into the lower eyelid. I didn't do any lower eyelid surgery. You can see in her case she has some bruising down here and uh, that's a, of course totally normal. Uh, it's all going to go away. Now you can actually use warm compresses at day three to try to increase the circulation around your eyelids and that will actually help to reabsorb some of this bruising that you have. So the first two days, cold compresses. After that, use some warm compresses, and that will help to accelerate the healing process. Now we can see the before and after photographs to see how she's evolved. And we can see very clearly that uh, I have uh, maintained some of the normal anatomy of her eyelid that distance from the eyebrow to the eyelid crease is still maintained. And she has a little more space on the upper eyelid to apply makeup. And she has good symmetry of the upper lids. And she's very happy and pleased with the outcome. And this is the typical outcome that I achieve with most patients who come in for upper eyelid surgery. I hope you found this uh, video to be informative in terms of upper eyelid surgery. Check out my other videos regarding eyelid procedures, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.